Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm down here at my pond this morning in the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia at about 2,700 feet. Many people are familiar with the macro fauna like frogs and tadpoles and snakes and salamanders and newts that you can find in the pond or around the edges. But there's some really cool micro invertebrates that are below the surface that you can find. So I went and took one of my nets today and I collected some aquatic organisms that I found living right on the edge through the grassy areas. And I did a couple pulls through there with my net and I put them in here. And the thing that I found was most fascinating was a water scorpion. It gets its name because, well, it kind of looks like a scorpion in his body plan. So today's episode is all about the water scorpion. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. Water scorpions are true bugs, and that's a real category in the insect world. It's anything in the order Hemiptera, and Hemipterans are characterized by going through incomplete metamorphosis. That's where they go from an egg to a stage that looks almost like the adult, but it lacks wings and sexual development. And these organisms will go through various molts from five to 10 molts in their life history and become a winged reproductive adult. The other characteristic all hemipterans have is a beak or rostrum. And they use this beak or rostrum to stab plant or animal prey and get their nutrition through that beak or rostrum. Water scorpions are true bugs. They're also true insects. And all insects have six legs. But when you first look at this, it appears that it has four legs because it holds its two front pair in a very raptorial kind of way, much like a praying mantis. The water scorpion's legs are proportionately really long compared to their body and maybe the, some of the longest legs in the insect world. Their body plan is very much like a praying mantis with the four legs they use for walking and the two legs that are held for catching prey. But they're called water scorpions because they have somewhat of a body plan like them. They're long and narrow with a long tail and the, they hold their front legs just like a scorpion would. So compare the water scorpion here with a real scorpion. Now real scorpions can sting with their tail. Water scorpions can't sting with their tail, but with that beak, they could potentially pierce human skin. And many other hemipterans have this ability to stab humans like bed bugs feed on humans, and others can stab you as a way of escaping danger. I didn't try to handle this hemipteran water scorpion with my hand, so I can't tell you for sure or not from my experience if they can, will stab you with that rostrum. You can see that the water scorpion holds its raptorial front legs out much like a scorpion and less like the praying mantis who keeps their front legs in a more supplicative or praying like fashion. Another distinctive feature of the water scorpion is this long straight tail like structure. Well, it's actually made of two parts and you could envision it as kind of two half tubes that are put together to make one log tube. And this organism doesn't have gills, but it breathes air from the surface through its tail, which functions much like a snorkel. So it'll spend its time hanging on vegetation or hanging near the surface of the water, but with only its tail protruding at the backside. And it's taking in oxygen through this. If it wants to go and live and feed in deeper water, it can pull in air as an adult over its wings and keep a store of oxygen there so it can go deeper and be away from the surface as well. Kind of like an underwater aqualung. Water scorpions look very much like the terrestrial walking sticks. And walking sticks are herbivorous, while the water scorpion is decidedly carnivorous. In fact, it's one of the ferocious predators of the underwater 
invertebrate world. I collected this water scorpion and put it in this little aquarium to take a closer look at it. And with that also came a lot of other water organisms that were in the same net. And in this sequence of close-ups, you might see a developing red-spotted newt. You might see damselflies, mosquito larvae, and diving beetles. While I was watching him, I saw him capture prey and stab them several times during filming. Here he appears to have captured some kind of dipteran or fly. He grabs it, you can see him holding it, and then he accidentally lets it go and reaches back up and pulls it back down again with those raptorial front legs. Here he seems to have captured an early stage of a damselfly nymph. There's a larger damselfly swimming around in here that he was not able to capture. But this one he did, and you can see him stabbing it with that rostrum. Now what is the purpose of stabbing with that rostrum? When he grabs that insect and pulls it into him, he can stab it with that rostrum and inject paralytic proteins. Along with those proteins, he also injects digestive enzymes. So he can paralyze and digest the insides of that organism inside the exoskeleton of that organism. Then he uses the rostrum to suck up the digestive interior juices and muscles that have been liquefied. Water scorpions may prey on other aquatic insects and invertebrates. I mean, they also may prey on tadpoles or newts if they're able to catch them and overpower them. Water scorpions are in fact ambush hunters. They will lay in wait for something to come by and then suddenly reach out and grab it. Water scorpions can swim, but they're very poor swimmers. They're more considered to be climbers of the underwater world. And while they're awkward swimmers, they're even more awkward on land. Now water scorpions can fly. When they're adults, they're f fully developed hemipterans. They have wings and they can crawl out, dry their wings, and they can fly to a new pond. Another amazing feature of the water scorpion is that they can do something called stridulation. What does that mean? They could rub two of their body parts together and make an audible sound, just like water boatmen. And if you catch my water boatmen video, you'll see that water boatmen can actually create a sound up to 90 decibels. It may be the loudest organism on earth, pound for pound, comparing its size to the volume of sound it can make. Now water scorpions aren't as loud, but they can do stridulation and they can make sounds that are audible to the human ear. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature Out Your Door and learning about water scorpions. It was a really fun episode to shoot. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I've been doing this for almost two and a half years now, and I have over 200 episodes on all kinds of things, from mushrooms and fungi to snakes and salamanders and frogs and so much more. Check out my playlist and see if there's more things that you might like to watch that would interest you. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.